Hey, this is Zach Gray, and we are in the city looking for amazing places to do a bridal shoot. So we're in the city, we're photographing a bridal session, and we're looking for some really cool places to uh, get some incredible shots using off-camera flash. And one of the things I love about off-camera flash is we can just find and look for backgrounds that we find interesting, and maybe they have some interesting light on them, but they don't necessarily have to have great light on our subject because we brought the light with us. So we found this simple brick wall just around the corner from a set of stairs, and I really love the way that it looked. So what we did first is we just took our Westcott XXL Rapid Box. We put it on uh, to a 35 degree angle to the right, which is a great lighting pattern to start with that any, any subject is gonna look really good with. The key here is uh, moving it off to the side to get a little di dimension in the lighting, raise the light up so the center of the light source is a little bit above the center of the eyes. And then the other thing we have to do is just make sure that we're balancing the flash with the ambient light. So all I did was I used my handy dandy Seiconic 478DR light meter. When I take a meter reading, I simply power up or power down until I get to 60%. What does that mean? Well, the meter actually tells you the percentage or the difference between the amount of light coming out of the flash and the amount of light that's already there. When that says 60%, I've got 60% flash, 40% ambient, or my flash is one stop brighter than my uh, ambient light. When I do that, I get this beautiful flash with this nice fill light from the ambient and it looks amazing. Then if I want to, I can just adjust my shutter speed to adjust for the ratio preference. So that's what we did for the very first setup. Uh, got it to 60%. The lighting uh, came out to, and I can read it right off the back of my camera here, F10 at ISO 100. Now, I didn't want to shoot at F10, I wanted to shoot at like F3.5, so I put on my ND filter, which is just sunglasses for your camera darkens the overall exposure, and then I can open up my f-stop, which is a really cool added benefit. You don't have to use an ND filter, I just prefer to use them so I can control my aperture and shoot at any aperture I want. Now some of you may be saying, well what about TTL? Can you shoot on TTL or can you shoot on high-speed sync? And the answer is yes. In this particular setup you could do that and it would look phenomenal. I didn't choose to do it for this particular setup. So then what we did was after we got that done, we photographed a few shots, we thought it looked great. Then we moved on to the second lighting setup. All we did for the second lighting setup was we decided to move our subject forward and now I wanted really, really pretty light on her. For me, pretty light is what I call short lighting. That's when I have her turn her face one way or the other slightly like this and I light the shorter side of her face, the side that the camera sees the least of. So as you can see in the video, she turned to camera right. I put the flash over her shoulder to camera right slightly. Then we took our background light, which is just another one of the exact same types of lights with a little deflector dish on it and an orange tungsten uh, gel inside of it. And we just shot that at the background. We turned it up and down until it looked cool in the photograph. Same settings as we had before, but now we have this beautiful texture of orange light painted on the wall. And it just adds a little more depth and dimension to the photograph. That's how we did the second setup. Now the power of that, you can get real specific if you want to. I like the power that's hitting the background to be at least one stop or more darker than whatever the main light is, but it's totally preferential. You could turn it up a bit more and have it be bright. You could turn it down a bit more and have it be subtle. Totally up to you. The great thing about the power packs that we're using, which is the Ellen Chrome ELB setup, is that if one power pack is, say, a 1200 watt second pack and one is, say, 500 watt seconds, like the two we had today, if they say 2.9, which is their kind of Ellen Chrome speak for how much power is coming out, it means the exact same amount of power is coming out of both heads, the same uh, brightness, no matter how powerful the packs are. So that's a nice way to be able to gauge how bright everything is. So that's what we did. We used the, the Westcott XXL Rapid Box. We feathered it off slightly to make the light really soft. All that means is instead of pointing the light straight at our subject, we just tilted a little bit more this way so the edge of the light would catch them and it looked fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed the photographs. Tell me in the comments below which one you like the best and don't forget to click subscribe for more.